Legacy Garvin trains over 60,000 civil servants through learning management system. House of Representatives Committee laments federal government's 200 billion naira yearly rent and private properties. And the foreign scene rescues intensify efforts to reach villagers trapped by Papua New Guinea's landslide. And in sports, Minister of Sports Development denies allocating budget for maintenance of Kaduna owned Amanda Bello Stadium renovation. And all the details, I am Mike James. The East government has trained over 60,000 civil servants through its learning management system, LMS, in the last one year. This, according to the Commissioner of Establishment and Training, Afalabi Ayotayo, has significantly increased the number of officers trained and addressed the growing demands and challenges facing the state's public service. To improve public service skills, the state is also revamping its training program with a focus on practical applications, which is a key part a two to three month exchange program where public servants work in the private sector. And while speaking at the ongoing ministerial press briefing at Alausa to mark the first year of the second term of Governor Babajide Sawalu's administration, Ayotayo said the state government from February 2023 to April this year paid over 16 billion naira to 5,886 retirees and over 60 billion naira since 2019. The Commissioner said the state government also held its 103rd and 104th bond ceremonies in 2023 and 2024 with a presentation of 3.1 billion naira to 1,013 retirees, as well as 4 billion naira to 1,455 retirees. Establishment matters, industrial relations, and pension management. The state government has undertaken measures to boost internal capacity of officers within the public service. These initiatives represent government's commitment to promoting professional growth, enhancing performance, and driving excellence across various departments and agencies. I noted that the ministry prioritizes workers' welfare, hence its constant engagement with union leaders through annual dialogue to deliberate on matters affecting public service growth and development. Our correspondent, Adiola Kindeli, quotes the commissioner as saying that the ministry played a vital role in supporting and guiding various government bodies, ministries, departments and agencies on establishment matters, including ensuring adherence to regulations and guidelines in the period under review. Aristotle's monitoring office, PMO, in collaboration with Lagos Bureau of Statistics in the last one year, carried out comprehensive compilation of manpower statistics to serve as a resource for policymakers to make informed decisions, optimize workforce management and prioritize employees' welfare. Permanent Secretary, Aristotle's monitoring office, Adetutu Shosoya, who made this known during the ministerial press briefing at Alausai Kedja, so the office conducted a major routine inspection exercise to over 80 parastatals and agencies across the state. Oshosoya also noted that in a bid to ensure efficiency among civil servants in Lagos, the Public Monitoring Office will from next month and back on working tours to all parastatals, agencies and government-owned companies to conduct on-the-spot assessment of their operational activities. He said the exercise is to ensure that all agencies are managed and run in accordance with relevant administrative and financial guidelines. Oshosoya stated that in the last one year, the PMO has consistently built the capacity of its workforce through manpower, information sharing, coaching and deployment of technological skills to upskill staff productivity, and as well through a program on Lagos Traffic Radio tagged Know Your Agency to create more awareness about parastatals, agencies and government-owned companies.
regulations that govern the operations of the passengers agencies and the government of enterprises. Our correspondent, Adjilai Kindlili, reports that a total number of 32 agencies enabling laws are presently under review with the Law Reform Commission at different levels of assessment. Lagos Waste Management Authority, LOMA, has launched the Know Your PSP campaign, an initiative aimed at improving communication and cooperation between resident and private sector participation PSP operators responsible for waste collection. Managing Director, CEO of LOMA, Miwa Badegeshi, said the campaign was aimed at improving waste management practices throughout the state. Badegeshi said the initiative would provide residents with detailed information about the specific PSP operators assigned to their areas for conduct and for reporting issues or requesting additional services. He said LOMA had established dedicated helplines and online platforms where residents could easily access information about their designated PSP operators, report issues and provide feedbacks, adding that this would make it easier for residents to communicate with their waste service providers so that challenges were promptly addressed and services consistently delivered. To the rest of the stories, the House of Representatives Committee on Public Assets says the cost of rent in private property by the federal government gulps about 200 billion naira annually, despite many forfeited public assets in the form of buildings and unused land spread across the country. The committee also lamented that as a result of their non usage, the property were being vandalized by criminal elements all over the country. The lower legislative chamber urged the federal government to renovate and convert permanently forfeited lands and buildings into offices for federal government agencies operating from rented offices. The chairman, Committee on Public Assets, Ademori Kuye, said the huge amount being spent on rent and furnishing of apartments by the federal government was at variance with calls for cost-effective measures by Nigerians. Meanwhile, a member of the committee and member representing Oriadi Federal Constituency, Oshu State, Oluwali Oke, said that some of the abandoned property might have either been owned or auctioned illegally. The Chief of Army Staff, Adari Lagbaja, has urged Nigerian troops to step up efforts in protecting the nation, especially in the area of fight against insecurity. Like Bajan made this call while addressing the troops during his maiden operational visit to the 35 Artillery Brigade, Al Mala Barracks, Abelkuta, Ogo State. The course admitted that most of the troops were operating under a very difficult and challenging environment, expressing the need to live up to the demands of the calling. Like Bajan assured the troops of the Army's headquarters' commitment to addressing some of their challenges as soon as possible. Some of the challenges in According to him, our dedicated state of accommodation, medical center, non-existence of soldiers, club, and electricity. And in some years, emergency services are reach, racing to reach villages hit by a massive landslide in Papua New Guinea's isolated Enga province, where hundreds of people are feared to have died. The Ontarian agency said a rapid response team Made up of medics and military personnel has managed to reach the isolated landslide site. According to Enga Province Member of Parliament, Amos Akim, the landslide buried more than 300 people and 1,182 houses. United Nations officials, Saren Atbrak, said the area affected by the landslide covered the size of three to four football fields. Footage from the scene shows local locals pulling bodies from beneath rubbles and trees as they traverse the terrain covered by giant boulders and uprooted trees. In other to sports news, the Minister of Sports Development has denied an allegation by the Chairman, House Committee on Sports, Ekene Adams, that its allocated budget for the maintenance of the Kaduna State owned Amadabilo Stadium. The Ministry stated this after Adams expressed concern over the lack of sincere commitment by the Minister of Sports Development, John Enner, towards Nigeria's sports development goal. 
Adams alleged the minister was not being sincere despite efforts by the committee to have a smooth and good understanding with him. The ministry, through a statement signed by its director and head, Press and Public Relations Unit, Kendi Ajayi, denied Adams' allegations, saying the House representatives' members' com comment was a clear demonstration of his ignorance of the state of affairs within the sports sector. The statement added that Adams also got his facts wrong over the 12 billion naira federal government intervention fund to the sports industry. News at 10, but just before we go, your vehicle is not a strong room. Please keep your valuables off the view of Miss Grant. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms X, Traffic Radio 961, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Subscribe and watch our news and programs live on YouTube at Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website, www.trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that the Sawalu administration initiated 500 hectares rice farm technology intervention project? Well, you can get more details on the Legacy Government website and end the news here are the highlights of the major stories. The Legacy Government has trained over 60,000 civil servants through its learning management system, LMS, in the last one year. The House of Representatives Committee on Public Assets has said that the cost of rent in private property by the federal government costs about 200 billion naira annually, despite many forfeited public assets in the form of buildings and unused land spread across the country. And we also told you that emergency services are racing to reach villages hit by a massive landslide in Papua New Guinea's isolated Enga province, where hundreds of people are feared to have died. And in response, the Ministry of Sports Development has denied an allegation by the Chairman House Committee on Sports, Ikini Adams, that it allocated budget for the maintenance of the Kaduna State owned Amandavilla Stadium. And for contact with the newsroom, send a message to info at traffic radio 961.ng. That ends the news broadcast. It was compiled by Coyote Mafalashiri. Good morning and thank you for listening. My name is Mike James.